Hey, this is Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com. And today we're going to talk about how we can use a Gantt view inside of Airtable to help you with your project management. Now, Airtable has lots of views that can help you with project management, including a timeline and a Kanban. But I think if you have a true project management function within your organization, you'll probably find it helpful to use a Gantt simply because it has the ability to show you dependencies. Now, the Gantt view is a little bit different than some of the other views where you can just simply click a button and everything works. So we're going to spend some time talking about some of the best practices in configuring a Gantt view for your organization. Right now, I already have projects and tasks set up. You can check out some of our other videos if you want some best practices on how to architect that. But we're focused mostly on the tasks side of the house today because we're going to look at a single table, in this case tasks, to be able to create that Gantt view. Now, just for some of the setup for this, you'll notice I do have a lookup to my project. So I've got my tasks, my project. I created a phase, which I did as a single select. And I did this because I wanna have some color coding going on. This is not a required field at all, but I think you'll see how this helps from a visualization standpoint to have a little bit of color. I also have a start date and an end date, and both of these are date fields. They're not formulas. So for example, I don't have a start date, and then I add three days, and that equals an end date. I want the actual date fields because we're going to be able to move the dates around, and that wouldn't work if we were utilizing a formula. And then we have one more field, which is a little bit unique, and this is for our dependencies. And what I've done is I've created a linked field here. Now, if I edit this, I actually linked it to the same table. So I'm on the tasks table and I linked it to tasks. And you have the option to say whether you want it to link to multiple records. I would if I were you, just because we know that tasks could have multiple other tasks that they're dependent on. But this is your preference. It doesn't have to link to multiple records. The other thing I'll say is that this field Whichever you prefer, you can think of it. You can either think of the predecessors, the things that this task is dependent on, or you can think of its successors, the tasks that are dependent on the actual task that you're on itself. I typically think of the predecessors. So I call this dependent on. If I look at a task, it is dependent on this other task. But you'll see in a moment when we configure it, how you can look at it either way. So it's really your personal preference. At this point, I'm going to look at my views in the lower left-hand corner. I'll press the plus button next to the Gantt. And we could call it something else, but I'll just call it Gantt view for now. And when this loads, this is a little bit different than some of our other views where it just creates it and we're good to go. Instead, we need to do a little bit of configuration here. And this is because this is really one of the most complex views inside of the system. It's not complex once you're actually using it, but to configure it, it requires a little bit of information. So if you configured your table like I did, you already have your start and end dates, and it tends to recognize that automatically, but you can go ahead and drop down and choose the appropriate date field. We'll continue this. And then this is what I was talking about in terms of the linked field I called mine dependent on because I wanted predecessors or I could have called it predecessors. You could have successors if you prefer. In my case, I like to think about what is this task dependent on? What are its predecessors? And then we also have the option to highlight a critical path. This is just an additional visualization that will show you inside of the system that shows you the path that you have to follow that could be the most craziness if you don't follow that path that if something gets off it has all the domino effects and that will lead to your project getting off here we'll go ahead and press continue and the final thing that we need to do is decide whether we want to enable milestones i definitely want milestones enabled typically you're going to use it for either the end of a phase you'll have a milestone or the more specific meaning for the purpose of Airtable is really any event that just has a single date so if you're working on something that spans multiple days, but let's say you have a meeting with a client, that could be a milestone because it's just a single point in time. You could have a deliverable, like I'm creating an SOW, the creation of it would be multiple days that it would take me to work on it. But delivering the SOW would be a single milestone. It just has a date. 
In this case, I am going to utilize milestones and you'll see that this appears a little bit different visually inside of the Gantt view. We'll go ahead and finish this. And you'll notice right off the bat that those milestones or the single date items, in order to get it to appear as that diamond that you see, when you're on the grid view, you'll notice that those items just have an end date. They don't have a start date. And it's going off of that end date to determine both that it is a milestone and the date of that milestone. Let's head back into the Gantt view. And the first thing you'll notice is that this is a little bit messy here. We've got multiple tasks with the same labels and it appears like it's just one mega project here. But if you remember when we're in our grid view, we often are grouping by something. So I've already grouped by a project here. We're gonna do the same exact thing inside of our Gantt view. So I'll click up at the top where it says group, and I'm going to group by my project. I would highly recommend that you do the same thing. And you can see right off the bat that we've got Hooli and Pied Piper here. And now it starts to make a little bit more sense from a visualization standpoint. I would say that even though we've got the ability to look at multiple projects at the same time, I think this works well if you have just a few tasks for your projects, but I showed basically a, a simple example of a project in my world. Typically, we'd have maybe 50, 60 tasks, and that's going to be very visually complex. Another thing that's pretty slick with this is if you are kind of thinking as, of it as a portfolio management solution, ma meaning that you're managing multiple projects at the same time, remember that you could group by another field. So we could group by the phase as a second subgroup here. And where this is helpful is we could go ahead and we could show just the high level phases. And I love the way that that looks, especially in my case as a manager, I don't really care down to the specific task level detail. I wanna be able to see the big level phases. I love the ability to use the subgroups here to be able to manage that. In this case though, I'm thinking about it like a project manager on this individual project. And so I don't want to see multiple projects going on simultaneously. That's just going to get a little bit messy for me. So this is a perfect excuse for us to use a filter. We'll add a condition and we're only going to show where the project is. And let's go ahead and just show our Pied Piper project. This is starting to look better from an individual project management standpoint. Again, do your subgrouping if you want to have that nice portfolio view. But as an individual project manager, I'm probably just going to be looking at this. Now, this is looking a lot better already. But one thing I do is let's go ahead and color those fields. Now, you could create some conditions and color it a certain way. But I think that it's really helpful when you already have phases created to color it based on the phase. So let's select a field. We don't want our status field. Instead, we're going to do this by the phase, and that adds some nice natural coloration to that where we can more visually break down into the pieces of the project as we're looking at it that way. Now, from here, we have some additional settings. These can be toggled open from up at the top here. Most of this we went through when we configured this initially. So we had our start and end dates. We can see how compact we want this to look. I typically prefer short myself. We can give the label that we want for the name. We've got our task name. And then this is really helpful is to have date visibility because I hope you're not working over the weekends, folks. I like to say, let's only show me the work days. And it's a subtle change, but you'll notice that that's going to filter out the visible weekend dates. And what's really nice is when you're actually dragging these days around, it's not going to have something fall onto a weekend. So if a task was supposed to take four days, let me zoom in a little bit so we can see this. Remember, you've got the ability to, to zoom in and look at this at different levels. Let's maybe do a month here. So if I do only work days, notice how we've got the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we don't see Saturday or Sunday. And if we're pushing something around and we're pushing out those dates, that delivering the SOW is never going to fall on a weekend. It's going to take that into account as long as you have this setting selected. So I definitely do that right away, especially if you're an organization that 
values your employees' times and not working on the weekend, definitely don't schedule it over that time. You'll notice as I'm shifting these around that it's changing what's highlighted gold and as well as what appears vertically here. So if we move this back over here, and so we've got the ability both to change our critical path as well as the dates. Everything is done by dragging. If you have dependencies and you move them, it's going to move the, the tasks that are dependent on it. So this really is a very full-fledged project management solution from being able to manage the dates. It's so much better than if you were in a grid view and you move something and then you have to manually update it or create a whole long series of automations to update all the corresponding dates. I think it was a very thoughtful, tasteful approach of how Airtable made this both configurable and easy to use, but also really delivers a punch when it comes to the project management side of things. Let's zoom back out here to a quarter. And again, you can see at a higher level, if we were to move out the delivery date of this SOW, it's pushing out all these other items. So when you're actually in the midst of a project, and we all know how projects go, you're waiting on a client longer than expected for something to happen. Now you can shift everything out and not have to edit each individual task itself. Now you can go ahead and click on any item, any specific task, and it's gonna open up this little preview mode over on the side. This is gonna give you your high level information, the task label, the dates. And with this, remember that it doesn't matter what kind of view you edit the data in, this is going to edit it everywhere. So whether you're dragging it over here or you're changing it here, that's going to impact what the data looks like on the grid view side of it as well. Now. Unfortunately, there's no way that we can just edit what this experience looks like. Let's say you had a description and you want to see, okay, well, what do you actually do for that step? This isn't the best view for enablement per se, but you can just double click an item and it'll actually open up the record view for that particular task. So that's where you can see all of the other fields, notes that you've had, you can leave comments, and you've got a lot more flexibility on that front. One of the things that's interesting is if I did click something and drag it out, dependencies really only work the one direction. So if I were to then bring this back in time, it's not bringing all the other pieces along with it because it doesn't need to. But here's a slick trick. You could go ahead and highlight all of these records and click and drag them and they all follow along. So this is a really nice feature just built in. Uh, that you can utilize to be able to move tasks and mass. Now let's go ahead and add a record. We could give it a table here. We'll just call it new task for now. And we'll have it just start kind of in the middle of our project. Notice that how it adds that new task. And if we are dragging it to the left, it happens earlier in time, then notice that it naturally moves vertically in the system if we drag it out the other way it moves to the appropriate spot we don't really have to worry about the date management from that standpoint and then also if you want to be able to have dependencies you can put the dependencies in the grid view that's what i had done initially just to have some of that architecture there but what's great is you can do it directly from here in a pretty nice fashion so you can click you'll notice that when you hover over a task it's got the little bubble that appears here, you can go ahead and click and then drag to that task. And that sets up now that dependency. So that's always starting from whatever the parent task is and going to the child to be able to manage that. And then of course you can double click and open up that record. If you want to add other things like add to our phase, let's say it's part of the design phase, and then it'll adhere to the color coding and things like that. Overall, I have to say, I'm really impressed with how Airtable designed their Gantt view. Airtable, in my mind, I've often called it the box of Legos, where they design really good features, but you really have to put them together yourself. It doesn't really follow much of a business process. But their Gantt view, on the other hand, I think does a great job at adopting principles of project management and baking it into the solution so that you don't have to design all of the project management pieces and the dependencies and dates moving and all of that, it just happens and works out of the box as long as you do that configuration up front. 
I hope this video has been helpful for you to see how you can use the Gantt view inside of Airtable for your project management. If you have any questions, project management is one of the areas we have a lot of expertise in at Automation Helpers. We're offering a free half hour consultation if there's anything that we can do to be of service to you and your organization to get you up and running with Airtable.